Hello everyone, welcome to Radiology Case Review Series. In this video, we are going to look at images of a young patient who recently had COVID-19 infection approximately three weeks ago. Patient presented to emergency department with headache and seizures. Let's look at the MRI examination of the patient. On the MRI, as I scroll through, you can clearly see increased flare hyperintensity in the left cerebral hemisphere cortex, most conspicuous in the region of insula frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital regions. There is corresponding increased restricted diffusion. Also, following administration of intravenous contrast, you can clearly identify asymmetrically increased leptomeningeal enhancement in the left cerebral hemisphere. On the SWI sequences, you can clearly identify hyperintense vessels in the left cerebral hemisphere which is asymmetrically increased compared to the right cerebral hemisphere, consistent with decreased oxygen extraction, presumably in the setting of increased perfusion. So we are dealing with an young patient who has increased flare hyperintensity in the left cerebral hemisphere cortex with increased leptomeningeal enhancement. Differential diagnosis based on the clinical presentation of headache and seizures would include infectious encephalitis, post-ictal changes, ischemia, and hemiplegic migraine. Patient underwent extensive workup, including CSF analysis, blood analysis, CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis to assess for any underlying malignancy. Patient's autoimmune profile titus came back, which demonstrated very high levels of MOG antibodies, which was 1 is to 100. The normal is less than 1 is to 20. Appearances are consistent with Flames, which stands for flare hyperintense lesions in anti MOG, which stands for myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein associated encephalitis with seizures. This was first described in 2017 by Ogawa et al. This is a subgroup of MOG associated disorder. These patients classically present with headaches, fevers, and seizures. MRI appearances are rather classical, which essentially affects the leptomeninges and cortical regions with restricted diffusion, flare hyperintensity, and hyperenhancement as we saw in our patient. Usually these imaging features are unilateral, but rarely they can also be bilateral. I found this uh, article in the literature which uh, demonstrates the imaging features in flames, just like as we saw in our patient, there is flare hyperintensity in the cortex with restricted diffusion. They also did perfusion imaging, which confirms there is increased perfusion in the affected cerebral hemisphere. As we saw in our patient, the SWI demonstrates increased hyperintensity in the vessels because of decreased oxygen extraction in the setting of hypervascularity. As we saw in our patient, there is diffuse leptomeningeal enhancement and MR angiogram images demonstrates increased vascularity in the affected side. So uh, it is interesting to find in the literature that uh, following SARS-CoV-2 infection, patients can develop anti-MOG associated disorders. So in this case review series, they had four patients. First patient had ADEM-like presentation, second patient had optic neuritis and myelitis, third patient had bilateral optic neuritis, and the fourth patient had unilateral optic neuritis. They also give references to all recently published case reports where patients developed anti-MOG associated disorder following SARS-CoV-2 infection. I don't want to sound like anti-vaxxer, but it is also reported that anti-MOG associated disorders can present following vaccination. These are the various case reports published recently. I like this catchy title, adding fuel to the flames. In this case review series, they had two patients who had unilateral leptomeningeal enhancement with variable flare hyperintensity. So they gave this acronym FUEL, which stands for Flare Variable Unilateral Enhancement of Leptomeninges in MOG IgG Associated Disease. I hope you found this case to be interesting. Thanks for your attention.